Hello, everyone. If I may add something, the main idea here is that any part of this could break and the car would still move. The Tesla full self-driving car will keep going even if one of the computer chips fails, the cameras fail, or the power lines fail. It's much less likely that this computer will break down than that someone will lose consciousness. That is the important measure. Now, let's look at Tesla's full self-driving computer, which is the brains of the beast. Imagine that different parts of your car start to break down all at once, like the cameras, power circuits, and maybe even each ship or two. But your Tesla keeps driving as if nothing is wrong. Tesla's high-tech computer chip makes the car so cool that a flat tire doesn't even matter at a party. These days, every Tesla that leaves the factory is full of more than just electric hopes. It has all the hardware it needs to be fully self-driving. Yes, it's the same as getting a phone that comes with all the apps you could ever want. The best part, the people who already own it only need to wait for software changes. You know you can't wait for the next season of your favorite show to come out because you know you'll watch it all at once. LiDAR is a waste of time, and anyone who relies on it is lost. Too many expensive devices that aren't needed. It's the same as having a bunch of expensive add-ons. They want to add a lot of appendices because one isn't enough. That's not reasonable. You'll see. Now we'll talk about LiDAR, or as Tesla might say, look, another one. Elon Musk thinks that LiDAR is like bringing a library to a Twitter fight. It's too much and so last year. It's pricey and to be honest, city rides that use it use electricity like tourists with free drink tickets. And this is where Tesla shows off their fleet of tech-filled cars that drive around and collect all kinds of info. Tesla is way ahead of everyone else. It's like being the only person in a poker game who knows all the cards. It's like having an army of robots that learn new things every minute they're on the road with this fleet, while other companies try to catch up. Tesla is busy teaching its cars how to handle anything, from a squirrel crossing the road to seeing a UFO. Maybe not UFOs, but you get the point. Not yet, though. Tesla's journey is far from over. The fact that there are ups and downs every day makes it even more interesting. Why does Tesla keep pulling more and more investors down its rabbit hole? But do you know who else is as optimistic about Tesla as you are? That's our sponsor for today, Seeking Alpha. To fully understand Tesla's impressive progress, one must not merely watch from the outside. Seeking Alpha is the place to go for Tesla fans and people who are always on the lookout for the next big thing in the stock market. It has all the latest news on Tesla, including price goals for Tesla stock new Tesla products, and everything Elon Musk. Avoid the lamestream media's noise that is against Tesla. The best pro Tesla news site on the web is Seeking Alpha. If you click on one of the affiliate links in the description and then buy something, our channel may get a fee. Thanks for your help. Unfortunately, the only way to get through LA traffic is if the car can work even if it's not tied to the fleet at all. It just sends out better and better training as the fleet gets better. In other words, if you unplugged it from the fleet after that, it would stop getting better, but still work fine. Self-driving computers are very powerful, and we should point out that they would have made those predictions even if they had never seen that road before, as long as it was in the United States. It's going to be a dump for everyone. I think that will happen. Take notes. Next, let's talk about why Tesla cars are like that kid in school who always does well on tests even though they don't need to. Tesla's Elon Musk talks about how powerful the car's brain is. Think about this. A Tesla can handle LA's notorious traffic jams by itself, even if it can't reach its other robot friends. But there is a catch. It can't learn new tricks if it stops talking to its fleet. It's like trying to learn how to dance without ever seeing a movie of it. Yes, you can dance, but you might not win any competitions. Elon doesn't like LiDAR either. He says it's like the VHS of car sensors. Too expensive, not needed, and not the best way to see through fog or heavy rain. If you have night vision that's good enough for the military, why use a pricey flashlight? It means that 425,000 cars have at least hardware too, which means they have all eight cameras, radar, and ultrasonics. They have at least a video computer, which is enough to sort through the data. Moving on to 732. Tesla reassures us that they have everything they need for the hardware. 
Their cars have enough processing and sensing power to handle the real world's huge amount of info and still want more. Being able to drive where you want is very important. Tesla is very good at figuring out where cars can go, which is very important. Depend on GPS. Tesla says no way. It's like trying to find your way on roads from the 1990s. When it comes to driving, it's all about what the car can see and understand. GPS is great for pointing you the right way. That is, GPS is like that friend who says they know a way to get somewhere faster but ends up getting you lost even more. Since about October 2016, the hardware for the whole system has been built with a robo-taxi in mind. When we released version 2 of the hardware autopilot, we didn't think that cars made before that would be upgraded. To give you an idea of how hard this is, we think it would cost more to make a new car than to fix up the old ones. It's not worth it unless it's built in. We've talked about the future of self-driving cars. There is hardware, there is vision, and there is a lot of software. And here, the program problem shouldn't be played down. There is a huge program problem. It's a hard software problem to handle huge amounts of data, train against those data, and drive the car based on the vision. In 2016, Tesla was already putting together parts for their self-driving cars. The short version is that if the main power pack stops working for some reason, Tesla systems are set up to keep the steering and brakes running smoothly on backup power. This is like having an extra generator for your car, but cooler because it can steer and stop. Let's talk about software though, since running this robo fleet isn't just a bunch of zeros and one S to do this huge job. We need to process a lot of data, teach AI to see the world the way we do, and make sure the car can handle any unexpected road conditions. It's kind of like trying to teach a robot how to find its way around a teenager's room. It's crazy and unexpected, but it works. The company that makes the Model 3 said that they now get more than 5,000 cars a week. We have no trouble with 5,000 cars a week. It's not even hard. We use large-scale solar, which we were able to do when we bought SolarCity, and we also build and install solar roofs, which is going really well. We are now on version 3 of the solar tile roof, and by the end of the year, we plan to make a lot more of them much faster. It looks great on my house. That's right. I make the power wall and pack. The power pack and power wall are what we made. In fact, the power pack is now used in huge power grids all over the world, including the world's biggest battery projects that are more than 100 megawatts in size. Another thing we hope to finish soon is a gigawatt scale battery project. This should be done by next year, at the latest. Now that we're in the present, Tesla isn't just about making fancy electric cars. Elon Musk is talking about a lot of things, like making 10,000 cars a week. Big, it's not just cars either. It has to do with solar projects and batteries that are stronger than most energy drinks. In the world of making cars, this is like the power up in a video game. Oh, and the future. This is all about growing with the Model Y, semi-trucks, and yes, those self-driving robo-taxis that we've been hearing rumors about and that are set to come out next year. There will be no need for a driver's seat in these cars, they say. Yes, soon enough your car may do all the driving while you just sit back and wonder why you ever put up with traffic. It's like getting a chauffeur, but the driver doesn't need to be paid, so you can just charge them. We think it might be possible to flatten out the demand distribution curve and make the car work at a much higher usefulness level than a normal car would. Most people use their cars for 10 to 12 hours a week. A lot of people drive for 1.5 to 2 hours every day or 10 to 